Jordan Anderson. And I'm Andrew Hamilton. You're watching the DWC Journal. For our first story, we have the reporter Alex O'Brien on the campus of American University, located in Washington, D.C. Here, a great deal of construction is taking place as the campus is looking to replace many of its heating system pipes with more cost-efficient versions. I'm here on the AU campus looking to find out why all this construction is taking place. As you can see, much of this construction project has involved the digging up of roads and sidewalks in order to get to the heating system pipes underneath. As a result, many pathways on the campus have been blocked off, making it difficult for those working or living on campus to traverse it. To get more details on the ins and out of this construction, I decided to visit the Osborne Building, where Tony Cortez, project manager of the construction on campus, resides. The central heating system is, is steam-based, so very, very hot, pressurized steam uh, to each building. The system itself is probably 60 years old, so even though you have nice, big, thick pipes um, carrying that steam from the central plant that's just across the way to each of the university's buildings, uh, even that nice, strong, thick steel pipe breaks down over enough time. According to Mr. Cortez, this project will take a little over two years and will be done in the winter of 2020. According to Cortez, he's only a small part of the construction effort here at AU. There are literally hundreds of people that make this thing happen, and my part is very, very small. You have people come in day in and day out from daybreak to sunset to make this thing go. Facilities and American University are, are very proud to have this project and very proud to have all of these people that will help AU uh, meet its mission goals for the next 50 years. Mr. Cortez tells us that this construction project will take about two years, and once it's done, American University will be looking forward to a bright future. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Alex. While the replacement of these pipes is slightly disrupting campus life, the construction project furthers the development of the university as a whole. Now that it's summertime and kids are out of school, they need fun activities to keep them occupied and entertained. The Smithsonian National Zoo is free of charge and has many animal attractions and exhibits. However, not everyone finds zoos to be specifically helpful towards animals that are kept in captivity. With that, we pass it over to Maya Broadwater to learn a bit more about the pros and cons of zoos. Hi, I'm Maya Broadwater and today I'm standing in front of the Smithsonian National Zoo. I'm here to discuss the topic of animal captivity and whether zoos are more harmful or helpful. Let's go check it out. Zoos are a place to come face to face with some of the rarest animals in the world and can even bring families and friends closer together and closer to nature. They also provide great educational opportunities to learn about animals and conservation efforts. They even can convince them to donate. Although zoos may be portrayed as places of conservation, many people are concerned with the ethical issues surrounding zoos. Some of these issues include the captivity of animals and the methods they use to obtain them. We decided to talk to a few tourists to see what their opinions on the ethical issues surrounding zoos were. Yes. I would not ha know how to answer that. No. Yes. Yep. Yeah, well, I have a problem with that. I think, yes, they could do, if it's done right, it keeps endangered species, it keeps them alive, which as long as they're alive, they're not extinct. When people come in contact with animals, they, they grow fond of them and then that connection helps them want to save them in the wild? When it comes to like them being on the verge of extinction, probably. But just for our selfish desires to be able to see them, yeah. probably not. You know, I, I think about trying to put myself in the shoes. I wouldn't want just yeah. to be seen, I'd rather be at home comfortable. The public is divided about ethics in zoos. No animal asked to be caged in a fence just to entertain. Zoos argue that what they're doing is justified due to their conservation efforts. Sadly, conservation is more of a marketing technique than an actual mission statement. The biggest con is the zoo's effect on kids. Kids learn from the adults in their lives. When they go to a zoo, they see that it is okay to put animals into enclosures for entertainment purposes. Zoos signify that imprisonment can be entertainment, and that may transfer to the kids' views about humanity. As we can see, the tourist views on whether zoos are more helpful or harmful are pretty divided. But due to our research, we've concluded that zoos are pretty harmful. Thank you for tuning in. This is Maya Broadwater, and back to you, Jordan and Andrew. Thank you, Maya, for informing us about both the good and the bad when it comes to the treatment of these zoo animals. 
How we care for the animals in these zoos should always be a topic of concern. Our reporter Max Coven stopped by the museum to give us a tour of what is offered at this historical institution. Let's send it over to him. Welcome to the sixth floor of the museum. I'm Max Coven. As you can see right behind me, we're in the heart of Washington, D.C. Look right here to see the Capitol. Come with me to see the past, present, and future of news right here at the museum. Over 10 years ago, the museum doors opened. The mission of the museum is to increase public understanding of the importance of a free press and the First Amendment. Visitors experience the story of news, the role of a free press in major events, and how the freedoms of the First Amendment, religion, speech, press, assembly, and petition apply to their lives. In this video, you saw newspapers from all around the United States of America, the Berlin Wall, the Journalist Memorial, and newspapers from the day of 9-11. Please go visit thenewseum.org for more information to support and learn how you can visit and help support their society. Thank you for touring the museum with me. I hope you had as wonderful an experience as I did. This is Max Coven signing right off in the heart of Washington, D.C. Thank you, Max, for the story. We recommend you go visit to learn about journalism and its effects on our world today. I'm Jordan Anderson. And I'm Andrew Hamilton. Thank, Thank you for, for watching, watching the DWC, DWC Journal. Journal.